Hello and welcome to today's video. Today I'm reviewing an ink by Robert Oster. That ink today is Muddy Grass. Now, as I'm filming this, the ink is, no, is not out yet and it's coming out about the time that this is going live. Uh, so I will put details on where to get it in the description below uh, once that information is available. But uh, let's have a look at this ink. First thing I wanna show it on uh, is one of these Robert Oster swatch play cards. So you can see it's a really lovely earthy kind of green. Um, you can sort of get that from the, the printed uh, colour sample on the top of the bottle, but uh, you really do see some beautiful earthy green. So uh, Muddy being the, uh, the series and sort of these sort of darker, murkier kind of colours within these uh, colour families. So let's look at it on some kinds of paper and uh, we'll talk a little bit about it. So we're going to start with it here on the standard 68 old stock GSM, old stock 68 GSM Tom River paper. Uh, as I said, this is Robert Oster Muddy Grass. I had it in two pens, Twisby Go Broad and Twisby Go Extra Fine. Once again, you can see that swatch there, lovely shading. Um, nice, earthy, murky green. Let's talk about this. Five points. Firstly, it is Australian made. Robert Oster makes a point of all his uh, inks, you know, sort of... Um, you know, being made in Australia and uh, Australian colours for the world to enjoy. Uh, he's He really does a lot of it all himself. And uh, I think it's a really impressive company. Uh, you know, a big company now on the world ink scene and here from Australia. It's from the Muddy series, as I said. There's a range of them, things like Muddy Sand, Muddy Dragon, Muddy Water, Muddy Wine, etc. Uh, and a lot of these are exclusives to the Robert Oster web shop. The next point is that they are safe. Robert Oster inks are safe for fountain pens, old and new. Uh, he makes a point of that. He really does. It's great. And that kind of leads into the next point, that they are no-nonsense ink. Uh, they don't have any sort of like, um, you know, they're not super high concentrated sheening ink that are, you know, going to clog up your pen or anything like that. There's no, you know, bizarre properties in the ink. Even with this one, there's not like virtually no sheen, there's no shimmer, it's just a solid ink. And the last point I want to make here is, is I've put ethical. Now that goes across the board for Robert Oster's company. Firstly, he has huge input uh, to charities uh, and um, he makes, you know, sort of deals on his website about, you know, a certain amount of profit goes to certain things, all that kind of stuff. But also uh, his inks are made in environmentally friendly ways and the bottles are as environmentally friendly as plastic uh, can be. So really a big hats off to him for that. Let's talk about the ink itself. So performance, this has got excellent performance. I've, I'll show it on some lower end paper you can see. In comparison to some other ink brands, it does very, very well. Fair to mid saturation, so it's not super saturated, but we get a nice you know color on the page. It's got nice flow, good dry time. So after at 20 seconds, this was just about dry. Like there's virtually no smear there. Some of the writing took a little bit longer where the ink pooled, but, and on this paper where it's sort of a, this is Tom River, of course, so it sits on the top, it doesn't seep in. Uh, but generally speaking, a really good dry time, and it is an easy ink to clean. It came out of the Twisbees without any issue. There was no staining, nothing like that. Um, I said it's got some water resistance. If we look at the water test here, um, it's not so much water resistance of the color, but you will not lose all your detail. So here is where I put water on, leave it for a little bit, and then dab it up. And you can see it, uh, you know, we kept a lot of the detail and then in the triangle, as you know, draw a triangle, move it around with a water brush pen. Uh, we kept a lot of the original line there. Um, I said it's got a good contrast on the page. Uh, and so for some of these things that like, I mean, I'm thinking of ink, another Robert also like avocado, where um, the contrast is less on the page. This has enough depth in it for really good contrast. It's easily read. And so it's got nice depth. There's a lot of different sort of shading, different hints of things coming through in the uh, in the ink there. Extra is no sheen, no shimmer, some water resistance and good shade. Let's look at the reverse of this page. We can see, as you would expect, nothing has come through. It's a relatively, as I said, mid-saturated ink. It's not super, super dark, uh, but there is a little bit of show through, of course. This is Tom or River paper. It will do that. Looking at it on some other paper now, we've got it here on the standard uh, student lecture pad paper from Spirex. It holds together fairly well. There's a little bit of feathering, but it's not too bad. Um, I'm actually quite impressed. There's not a lot of shading, of course. These lower end papers are not fountain pen friendly. They absorb the ink. And on the back, you can see in comparison to say some of these like Dime Mines and Conklin and Private Reserve and things like that, it actually has a very, very little uh, bleed through as well. Just mainly where like 
I've gone over lines a second time or put down a larger amount of ink. And on the office copy paper, we see a similar, similar kind of thing. The ink color is a lot duller. Um, it sort of turns like a brownie green. I suppose actually quite fitting for muddy grass. Um, but once again, it holds fairly well. There's a little bit of, you can see some feathering around Yon, Twisby and Robert there. Um, and on the back, once again, it, I think in comparison to some of the other brands of ink there, uh, it performs very, very nicely. Not much is really coming through from the extra fine and only once again, where we're laying down sort of double lots of ink or wet pools of ink from the, uh, from the broad. Now here on Rodeo, we get, but once again, that more richer uh, depth of color. Uh, this is where I put the ink down and let uh, the water dry. Um, and sort of, you can see it washes out. And we, we get a little bit of that line held behind there. Um, the swatch looks good. Nice sort of depth of color there. Um, this is still a little bit wet. I'm filming it a little bit earlier than I normally would. Um, but you can see that you, there is a quite a bit sort of left behind. Um, the lines are nice and tight. Um, it's good. It's it, it's Robert. It's rodeo paper, so you would expect that. But also, you kind of start to expect that out of Robert Oster as well. And um, of course, nothing has come through on the reverse of the page. So it's performing really, really well. Uh, it performs a lot like what you would expect from Robert Oster inks. Taking a very quick look here at the chromatography, you see that sort of darker line held behind. That's what we get when we put water down on the ink and clean it up, that's what's left behind, and that's held back very, very nicely. Then we get some greens, yellows, and a hint of blue at the top there, just to give a nice sort of depth of color there. Uh, it's, a, it's an interesting mix. Okay, let's do a color comparison now. I have it on a color ring card here. Uh, you can see, so this is the well-appointed desk color ring card. Uh, you can see that uh, it's got some nice shading and depth there. I've actually made a video uh, that's coming out in a couple of weeks, I think, where I uh, show how I make these, how I do my swatch cards, because I occasionally get asked, and I made uh, this one in it, and you can see uh, the process of getting the different shading and things like that. It's um, But you, you get a nice depth of colour there. Uh, so I wanted to show it along alongside a couple of things. Firstly, a Robert Oster that I love, which is Eucalyptus Leaf. It's quite a well-known green of Robert's. So you just see this the much browner sort of tone than, say, Eucalyptus Leaf there. Uh, and then a couple of other ones I thought it was sort of similar-ish to in Ferris Wheel Press Peter Moss, uh, which is an ink that I really, really like um, and has some of those more earthy qualities in common. And then Monteverde Olivine uh, for that lighter shading and that sort of, once again, that olivey green. But you just see how brown Muddy Grass is. And just to see how brown it is, here is my standard green, Mont Blanc Irish green. So it is on the brown side. It's, it's, I think Muddy Grass is a great name for this ink. So talking about the price now, this is for the standard 50ml bottle, which is, as I showed you before, uh, that one. Now, as I said, this is not available at the moment, so I'm just giving the standard 50ml price for Robert Oster inks. Uh, and this is from a US retailer and an Australian retailer. So US $18 and Australian $21.90 for 50 mils. They're good prices. As I said, I will put details of where you can get this ink in the comments, but in the description below, uh, once that is available. Uh, but a lot of his inks are available through things like his web shop, which uh, is really worth looking at if you want to know what his inks are about. So I've given this ink four out of five. It's a really nice color. It's got a really nice ink. It's got good color and it's got really good performance. I think it's a solid ink. Um, if you're looking for something a little different, a little green, you know, but not like a standard green, something that's got a bit of personality to it, this might be an interesting choice. So thank you for watching. I hope you found this video about Robert Oster Muddy Grass to be interesting and useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notifications button if you want to stay up to date with the videos that I produce and please feel free to get in touch using any of the platforms listed below. If you've got products you think I should be looking at or if there is a way you would like to support the channel by sponsoring a review or providing an item for review, I would love to hear from you. In the meantime, enjoy your inks, enjoy writing, and I'll talk to you soon.